What's up guys, it's Ivan and on this channel I provide tips, tricks, advice, and strategies for your graduate school applications. So if you are new here, consider subscribing. In this video, I wanted to explore the Harvard University housing website that is housed in the Student Affairs Division of the Harvard Graduate School of Education. That way you're better equipped to secure graduate housing while a student at HGSC. All right, you guys, so a lot of you have um, been accepted to the Harvard Graduate School of Education, so congratulations. Um, the next step is for you to find housing, and that can be probably one of the most challenging parts about um, going to a graduate school program, whether it's um, international or domestic. Um, housing is always the hardest thing to find because sometimes most people don't live in the location where they're going to be moving to. And so that was my case when I was up, when I got accepted into the Harvard Graduate School of Education. I was um, literally moving across the country to a new state, to a new location to pursue graduate school. And so I wanted to show you kind of some, I want to give you some advice on where to start your housing search. Um, and something that I wish I knew when I was applying for housing as an HGSC student. So I'm here on this website um, that the Office of Student Affairs has um, put together for all of you to kind of start that housing search. Um, and so they have a couple of things. So right now I'm on the website, I will link it down below in the description. So make sure you check it out, check it out there. But I'm gonna kind of go through some of it that way you're aware of what to expect as a um, person applying for housing um, if you're, if you're going to be doing HGSC. So right here, you have a contact information uh, on the right. So Crystal Quintanilla, she's the student affairs administrator. So you can always ask your questions by clicking on her name here and ask and emailing a question. But on this webpage here, you have general information about housing. And they do emphasize that OS, the Office of Student Affairs, cannot um, help you apply for housing. They can only give you the information as, and answer um, broad questions. Um, but they do provide a couple of links here where you can start your housing search. And we'll go through some of these in a little bit, but I wanted to first go down below and um, go through some of the helpful housing hints, just because I know a lot of people are curious about, you know, what is, what is Cambridge like? What are the price points, et cetera? And so the first point on this says that rent in Cambridge slash Boston area is very high. The average cost at a minimum is $1,950 up to $4,795 per month plus utilities. So this means that Cambridge, Boston is an expensive place to live. And I can attest to that. So I rented a studio for $1,250 that did include everything, including a utilities, and, I, and that was in Harvard Square, so really close to HGSC. But that's a lot of money, $1,250 for a studio that did not have a kitchen. Um, and so I ate out a lot. And that's just the reality of living in Cambridge, Boston, is that you're going to be expected to pay a large sum of money just to rent a, an apartment, a studio, any living um, situation. Even if you have roommates, you're looking at paying at least a thousand plus dollars for a room in a um, house, for example, with roommates. And so if you are trying to find cheap accommodation while you're an HGSC student, I suggest that you... Um, you know, that you don't search too much and wait too long to, um, you know, start applying for housing because I did that. I, you know, I was broke. I was um, a low income student. I did not have the means to um, pay 12, a thousand plus dollars on rent without taking out loans. And I didn't want to take out loans at the time or a lot of loans at the time. And so I was trying to find the cheapest housing and I went through a rabbit hole of not finding anything, everything was expensive, um, at least for the caliber of housing that I wanted. I wanted something that was um, clean and that was close to campus. And if that's something that you're considering as well, you're looking at paying at least a thousand plus dollars for accommodation. So I suggest that you take out, um, you know, that cheap rent out of your vocabulary now, because honestly, the reality is that you're going to be paying a lot of money just to rent an apartment or room in Cambridge and the Boston area. Some other things that they mentioned here are, um, let's see. Um, so Cambridge, Boston is really accessible via public transportation. They have a really good metro system um, that can get you to and from Harvard Square. So if you end up living outside of the Harvard Square area or the Cambridge area, they do have a really good metro system that's going to help you get to campus um, 
it at a relatively cheap price as well. And it's pretty quick on time. And there's a stop right at Harvard Square. They do say that living farther from Harvard will reduce rent costs. But take that into consideration because if you are someone who is new to, let's say, the Cambridge area and you are don't do well with, um, let's say, navigating stuff along those lines, then I personally suggest that you would, that you stay close to Harvard, close to Harvard Square, close to HGSC, because it's not only going to reduce your, your time, your community time, but it's also going to just make you feel more comfortable with the HGSC community. Even though rent could be less, it might cost you more or it, um, there's going to be added costs because of transportation costs, right? So, and then you, you're going to lose less time that you can be spending on your homework or other activities if you live closer to Harvard. And it looks like because if you are an education student that you um, could get 10% off um, every semester for a public transportation pass program, which is great. Um, so you want to make sure that you do use that and get involved with that if you are going to be living off of um, or off campus. And then the last point that they make here is that they want you to start looking early for housing. And I totally agree. If you've already been accepted with most of you have already, first of all, I want to say that you, you should accept your admission right away um, and then start that housing search. I waited very last minute to secure my housing. I waited until I think it was July and school there starts in late August. I waited until July to secure my freaking um, studio because I was looking for that cheap apartment and I couldn't find anything and I waited super long. Luckily, I was still able to um, get an apartment in Harvard Square through Harvard um, Housing. And I don't know how, I, how that happened, but I want you to make sure that you secure housing early on right before summer starts. So let's dive into some of these housing options. So on the left-hand side here, I'm going to put on-campus housing. And the reason why I wanted to go here first is because this is going to be the best um, bang for your buck, if you want to call it, um, if you live on campus. I always I always um, like to tell students that they, that they should um, look for university housing for a couple of reasons. So one of them is because university housing is obviously... Um, apartments owned by the institution. And so there's a couple of pros to that. So one of them is that a lot of them um, come with utilities paid for, or they come with free internet, they come with um, cable. And so they have free options. They all, you also know for a fact that the facilities are going to be clean and up to the city um, standards. So that, that makes sure, so that's going to um, allow you to feel at ease, especially if you are traveling from like an, inter an international location or even from across the country, it's going to put you at ease in terms of what to expect when you arrive um, at your apartment if you cannot come down to check it out before you, you know, sign the lease, for example. And so on campus housing through Harvard, you are um, assured that you are going to get a clean space that fits city, that fits city standards. And so you're not going to get something that, 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 that does not look look like what it looks on the website. So I want to make sure that you first target and search on the on-campus housing um, websites. That way you're able to secure a housing option through Harvard. And I'm not going to read through all this here, but here's some tips on um, Harvard University housing is what they call it. And they say that you can apply all year round, but it's obviously based on first come first serve. So the peak times when people are applying is March 3rd through May 1st. Obviously that window at this time has already passed, but you can still apply. So I suggest that you apply now and you look at options now. Um, uh, we're gonna look at the Harvard University housing portfolio here. And it looks like they have nearly 3000 apartments for specifically for full-time Harvard graduate students, faculty and employees. So this is great. So let's click on here. So as you can tell, they curated um, this website here with a lot of different um, apartments that you can look for, again, that Harvard owns. So these are gonna be the best of the best in terms of housing. And let's look at a couple of them. So if we look at the first one here, um, there's this listing, all of these are really close to Harvard Square. And the price ranges here for a studio is 1,920 to 2,220. And then one bed, convertible tells you the square feet it's a little bit more so as you can tell some of these are pricey but honestly 
you know, you already know what you're going to, you're going to, you know what you're going to get. You're going to get a good apartment with good um, facilities, with good um, appliances, et cetera. That is going to be close to HGSC or Harvard. So this is going to be great for someone um, who is moving from an international location, et cetera. Um, it looks like they are pretty pricey, to be honest, but some of these are like, for example, three bedrooms, so you're going to split the cost. You could find some affordable ones. For me, I think an affordable price range would be like 1000 Like this is a good price range right here. And actually this one's probably um, something that if I would return back to Harvard, I would choose this one actually. So this is actually the dorm that's really close to the Harvard Grad School of Education. As you can tell here, um, it looks really nice, right? And it's actually not that bad. And the good thing about Cronkite is that you do have to buy a dining pass, so you're kind of going to be like an undergraduate again. But that's a good thing because then you don't have to be eating out. Someone's going to be making your food. And all you do is sit in the dining table or dining room and you're able to um, eat your breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And look at the rooms. They're really cool. They're already furnished. So you get a bed, you get a mattress, you get um, a desk, et cetera. So um, you, it's already furnished. So what, what else can you expect? Sometimes when you are um, looking for like off-campus housing or some of these on-campus housing, Things, they don't come furnished. You have to buy your own bed. You have to buy your own um, drawers, etc. So this one's a good. Um, it has a gym. Um, the showers. You, they are they are communal, but that's not that bad. That looks really nice. So I would suggest that you look at Cronkite as one of your options. Um, and again, like if I would go back to HGC, that I would choose Cronkite because um, it does also give you that family feel. You are. Everybody that's living at Cronkite is going to be a graduate student at HGSC. So you get to interact with people at HGSC in a more communal way. The one that I stayed at, even though it was owned by Harvard, it didn't have that communal feel. Like I didn't feel like I was part of a community. It just felt like I was living in an apartment complex. Whereas people that lived in Cronkite, they said that, that they had a great time. They would meet with fellow HGSC um, students in like the common areas. They would walk to class together. They would go out together. Together, etc. And they and you feel that sense of community at Cronkite. So consider Cronkite as one of your options because honestly, if I would go, if I would look back at my experience, I wish I would have chosen Cronkite. And I actually was looking at Cronkite as part as one of my housing options, but again, I thought it was too expensive um, because they do require require you to have a meal plan. And I thought that I thought that I didn't want I didn't want a meal plan at that point because I had just been an undergrad and I had a meal plan back then and I didn't like that but honestly you're there for nine months and then I, I wish I did have a meal plan and I wish I was closer to campus and I wish I could have made um, friends with people um, in my dormitory or in this case it's, you do get a single bedroom so it's not technically a dormitory you do get a single bed but it's communal and there's common spaces and um, it seems like a lot of people that, that, that were housed in Cronkite had a really good experience, especially with building community. So yeah, so they have a lot of different options here that are owned by Harvard. Obviously, I suggest that you go through some of these um, at your given price point and then um, see if that's going to be an option and then apply. They have a lot of different options, as you can tell. Um, and I use this website myself to look for my housing option. And I ended up had, I ended up choosing one of these options. They don't have the option that I, I stayed at anymore. They converted it to something different, but um, that's where I found my housing. So now let's look at off-campus housing here. So they pretty much just give basic stuff. Look on Google Maps. There's um, this red line. So the metro system information. Um, there's just a couple of resources um, like Craigslist, apartment list, et cetera. And that you can look at if you're planning on looking for an apartment outside of Harvard. But again, I suggest that you look within the Harvard University housing website and try to secure housing through Harvard, especially if you are a international student or a person that is um, coming from a different state that's further from Massachusetts. Again, right here, they give you some price points um, in terms of off-campus off um, options. In Cambridge, studios are 2000 and up. And as you can tell, one bedroom, two bedroom, three bedroom is pretty high. Outside of Cambridge, studios are 1500 and up. And then, so it's slightly less 
than in Cambridge because Cambridge is a more affluent area. So you can definitely find like some cheaper options in Boston when you're actually in Boston. Um, but obviously the distance, you're gonna have to commute, et cetera. Um, and they do have some tips for international students as well. So you can look into that if you are an international student and start that process early. But again, I wanna emphasize that Harvard University housing is gonna be the best start to your housing search, if not the best option for you to secure your housing. Um, something else that you might wanna consider as well is going on Facebook and you know, a lot of the time, different cohorts have a Facebook group that you can access and you can ask people to maybe room with you and you can together find housing. I started off my search with that as well. I contacted two people that were gonna be part of my program and we were looking for housing together. At the end of the day, it didn't work out just because we all had different, um, um, we wanted different things um, within our, our housing. And so I ended up wanting to live on my own after that experience. That's a good way to also secure housing and have someone that you can work with um, to secure that housing. So go um, on Facebook, join those groups that pertain to your program, that pertain to the, the HGSC class of 2023 or whatever class you, you are in and start meeting people through there and see if they need roommates and um, work together to secure housing. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Let me know if you have any questions down below in the comment section and I will get to you as soon as I can. I will see you in the next video.